fellow Earthlings. It has been a little bit since we've spoken last. A little bit longer than I planned. For which I apologize, but I've gotten tired of apologizing and of being late. So from now on, just look for my videos at the end of the week. Because life happens, and some things I so, sometimes I can't control what comes into my life, but I've survived and I have returned with notes for this next episode. And if you're joining me for the first time, my name is Rogan, and you are watching the mysterious stoner in Ebola. Not just am I a stoner in Ebola, though. I am an ex-Christian. I've been a missionary kid. I've traveled quite a lot. And I'm here to share my experiences, what I've learned to be true, and what I've learned to be false. Just trying to make the world a better place in my own weird, unique, strange way. I have been going through the Bible as of late, but in the previous video, this one and the next one coming, I'm talking about my newfound beliefs. Well, they're not newfound necessarily. I've been, I've been collecting them over a period of time, ever since I deconverted from Christianity. In my previous video, I talked about right and wrong, and where I believe we really got our sense of right and wrong from, as opposed to the Bible, like I, how I was raised to believe, from God. Now, we definitely didn't get them from him, but you'll have to watch the video to hear what I have to say about it. In this one, I'm talking more about philosophy. Right and wrong is more about, I believe personally, is a little bit more about logic. It's arguable about being a little bit more than that, but, we'll, but that's part of what today is about. We're getting into a little bit more in depth of why people do what they do, according to what I have observed, according to how I have come to see and understand things. So, without any further ado, if you got some weed, light up, and let's get started. So what draws people to act out of lie, to cheat, to break the rules. Well, as a Christian, I was taught to say that it's sin. It's a hereditary curse that makes you feel good in the moment, but also makes you deserving of burning in hell forever. Like, it's just set up that way to be so tempting and mesmerizing. But you have to listen to God to know exactly what is right and what is wrong. And according to the Bible, there is no one who is good. Like, there, there's, there's no such thing as good people. It says, there is none good. God. There is none righteous, no, not one, in Romans 3, 10 through 12. And then there's a, another verse, that I, whose reference I can't recall at the moment, but says, heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And it's verses like these, there's probably more, but... It's verses like these that really, really makes it look like God is just shitting on humanity. He really doesn't think humans are capable of good behavior on their own. But there is a problem with the Bible saying that 
there are no good people. Because that's actually not true. It, it is easy to say that people are drawn to do bad things, but it's a little more than that, wouldn't you say? It's, it's not just bad things necessarily. And, and what's more, people, specifically non-Christian people, people of other religions even, or even people without any religion at all, without any belief in God, complete atheists, even those people like, are drawn to actually do good. Obviously not all of them, and they're not all drawn to do the same amount of good in the world, but you can't argue, you, you, you can't say that the vast majority of people are not drawn to do good. But you also, you, you, you definitely can't say that the vast majority of them, of them are drawn to do bad either. You see, we, we, all, we all make mistakes, but that doesn't always mean that those mistakes are really, really, really terrible. I mean, if humans, if humans punished each other the way God wants to punish humans, we'd all be lighting each other on fire. I think it's pretty safe to say that God's standards of right and wrong are a little bit over the top. Which means if, if, if he's over the top, if, if he's off in his ideas about what is right and wrong, well then, why are we drawn to do bad things and then some? It seems like we are, we are drawn to do more than that. We are drawn to do more than just bad and more than just good. We are drawn to do many things, but in the category of good and bad, there is a greater overshadowing that I've come to discover that tends to be on either side of these, that people affiliate with good and evil, even though they're not really good and evil at all. And people are being drawn to do both. We have people drawn to do great acts of kindness. People working towards discovering a cure for cancers. People who've won Nobel Prize. I, I don't follow the Nobel Prize shit, but I'm assuming because it has the word peace in it, Nobel Peace Prize, I'm assuming they did something great for the world that, well, maybe except for the guy that invented dynamite. Although for inventing dynamite, he was actually very peaceful. <sighs> um, but the idea is, you, you understand what I'm saying. There are people who do very, very, very magnanimously good things for the world who are not religious and who don't believe in God at all, then you've got those people in the intensive um, high security prisons who are completely nuts in the head and would love to kill and eat every person they get their hands on. Extremely violent and mentally broken and disturbed individuals. We have both spectrums in humanity. And then the rest of us are all kind of somewhere in the middle, going this way a little bit more, this way a little bit more. But the vast majority is like really, really mixed when it comes to humans, because we all crave both these things. 
opposite spectrums. And we, we really admire the people who get to do those really grand things for the world. And then we, we look down on and are, af are afraid or, or despise the extreme opposites who destroy, who wreak havoc. But there's a little, there's a little something in all of us that are drawn in both directions. I'm one of those people. I have the self-control to choose to be a good law-abiding citizen and not go crazy and shit. But everyone wants to go a little bit crazy, don't they? And unfortunately, a lot of people do. A lot of people don't learn how to control themselves. I'm getting a little bit ahead of, well, not ahead, but a little bit uh, rabbit trailing here. But you see where I'm going with this. The Bible doesn't talk about this duality in humankind. It only dwells on the negative, the bad, desperately wicked, deceitful, None righteous, no, not one. Because in God's eyes, you have to be absolutely squeaky clean, perfect. Even Mr. Clean probably wouldn't get into heaven. Well, he probably would because he's imaginary. According to my own research, and comparing it to what I have observed in the world throughout all my travels and all the people I've seen and all the stories I have heard on, you know, on the news and of, 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 of things of people doing things to each other, both good and bad, of all the varying degrees, I think the explanation for why people are drawn in both directions is something very similar to the Chinese philosophy of Taoism. Now, I don't just absorb a philosophy because it sounds good or attractive to me. I, I count a uh, philosophy as like a perspective from another human being. That is, that is basically what it is. It's, it's their perspective of the world. And I compare it with my own observations, and so I have not looked into every inch, nook, and cranny of Taoism, all right? I don't even understand it fully when I've researched it before, and I, I, I continue going back to it and, and the other things that I'm interested in. I, I have a busy life. I have tons of interests, so... I'm not an expert on a lot of things, but I know a lot about a lot of things. And I try to know the most about what I like the most. And, and I have come to learn and believe that there are indeed two forces in nature, just, just forces, a lot. Probably, well, not the same, obviously, but probably a lot like in Star Wars. There's energies and things, and scientists have discovered that there are energies invisible to our eyes that we can influence and that influence us. But two of these forces, and I think, I think they're, I don't think they're gods necessarily. I, they're like Mother Nature. They're like... They're like the clock of the universe, but they're not about time. They are about chaos and order, literally. That is what these forces are, chaos and order. Their job is to maintain order in the universe as well as maintain chaos. Sounds a bit out there at first. 
I know. But let me share with you a bit more. You see, we witness chaos and order almost every day. It's in nature all around us. We witness it with the sun rising and setting every day, the moon, the stars, the tides, the, uh, the way animals and creatures and nature grow and cycle. The whole, the whole cir There's a reason why there is a thing we call the circle of life. It's not tangible. It's not an actual circle. It's a, it's a cycle of many, many steps involving many, many different things, but the circle of life. Order. And, and, well, one thing at a time. We're still in nature. We also witness chaos in nature. Complications in births. Things don't go according to plan. Perhaps there are defects. I've watched different animal uh, planets and National Geographic uh, documentaries and such. I've, I've seen some of the disturbing things that can happen just with animals. That is unplanned. That is not part of the order. It's chaotic. And it's sad a lot of the times because there's, an, there's usually an animal dying or getting sick or getting left to die by pre uh, for predators or a predator coming and stealing it. But although that's part of the natural part of the circle of life as well, the predators and the, and the death and the killing and the violence, that is part of nature as well. But I feel like some of the most chaotic things, or the things that seem the most chaotic anyways, tend to be like the storms and the, and the natural the natural disasters that can kill thousands and destroy tons of vegetation and, and be extremely destructive. But not only do we witness this in nature, we witness this in humans as well. And the closer you look at it, the more you realize we actually have a love and hate relationship with order and with chaos. For example, with order, your morning coffee, your weekly paycheck, your day at the beach, all goes according to plan. That is order. That is something going the way you want it to. And then there are times order is not so pleasant. Just a few examples. When the government makes some bad rules. Like World War II Nazi Germany. prime example of bad organization not that it was poorly organized but that it was organ it was it was order that was made to destroy it was it was the some of the worst kind of order possible then there's the kind of order you don't want to go along with on a daily basis like at work or something but things go according to plan well, if you don't enjoy your job, then it's going to be a pain in the ass when they do. And you'll love it when things don't go according to plan. Because you'll be able to sit on your ass or whatever. Something other than what you hate doing. And then another example of poor order is how sometimes parents choose to raise their children. I was raised in a very unique fashion homeschooled for 18 years, raised on a mission field, and let me tell you, that fucks with a child's capabilities of socializing when they get older. And 
amongst a host of many other things. There was a lot of order in my home. But it was not a it was not a good kind. My parents tried their best, but the kind of order they chose to go with was a poor was in poor choosing. And is I, I, I have to live with the consequences every day because of poor order. which is partially why I love chaos so much. When order goes bad, you actually need chaos to kick the old order out of the way, to make way for a new order, a better order, something new and improved. That's one of the great purposes of chaos. And chaos is also the gateway to creativity, to art. And then, of course, we have the other side of chaos, the kind that people don't like. Of course, there's the big kind, the wars and such, and, you know, what we see in movies. Usually we see it more in movies, but the riots that we've had in our own actual streets, that's been very real chaos lately, and... Something as simple as having your weather, having having your plans to go to the beach cancelled by a rainy day that even the forecast couldn't be couldn't predict. Chaos. Someone dies in your family. Chaos. A flat tire. Chaos. So we see both positives and negatives, or both order and chaos. People want to affiliate good with the white of the yin and yang, with the orderliness, but that's not really, that's not really the way it goes. It's not good and evil with the yin and yang, with order and chaos, with light and darkness. All these things, the, the white, the black, the, the light, the dark, those are, those are more metaphorical. So which one, which one is better to go after, order or chaos? Because they both have benefits and they both have negatives. According to Taoism, and I am coming to accept and, well, experiment, experiment with as well, but I can see the logic of it already. And that is not to pursue one or the other, but obviously you cannot be a, a solid orderly all the time and solidly chaotic all the time because that wouldn't necessarily do I think it this is what I think this is where you have to bring in your ability to reason and to use logic that's what I talked about in my press first first video you don't have to believe in chaos and order and all that shit to be able to use logic but I think logic is a very key element to be able to discern between when it's a good time to use order and when it's a good time to be chaotic. And in what way? And honestly, really, you almost don't have to think about it too hard because chaos will happen anyways. And so will order. But you still have to make the effort yourself to be chaotic if things have been too orderly lately. I think you need a break. You need to get out of the rut. You need to switch things up. 
or when things are too chaotic, you need to say, all right, enough of this. I'm, I'm going to organize some shit. And everyone can do some organizing in their own lives. And let me tell you, a little bit of organization and discipline in your life goes a very long way. I'm literally looking at a lampshade on the floor behind my phone set up on my tripod and everything. And I have blankets on a chair over on this side that, well, they aren't even mine, so that's not really my fault. But, <laughs> and, and my room is still a bit of a mess right now. It, it's partially organized, it's partially clean. Because I haven't had time, I've tried. I've tried to stay organized, I haven't always had time because chaotic things happen. And we gotta be able to accept and roll with those things. Some things we can change. Some things we need to change. But there is always going to be order. And there is always going to be chaos. And whether we like it or not, we are victims to both, each and every day. But, as much as we are victims, we are just as much creators, whether we realize it or not, of both. And the further you look at the universe from the, from, from the most out there cosmic space level, cosmic, you can find order and chaos out there. And all the way down to the quantum physics, the, the atomic level, whatever the, whatever the new smallest level is that they've discovered, they still find order and chaos down there too. And some of that shit even knows when it's being observed by scientists. It's fucking weird, but cool at the same time. So if things on a, uh, I wonder if things on a, on a quantum level can tell that, or, or when, I should say, we are observing them and will make changes in what they're, observable changes in what they are doing, chaos and order and progress, it has to make you wonder if there are things on a bigger scale than what we can see or understand that also observe us and can tell what we're doing. Where am I going with this? Well, that's where things are going to be getting into the next video. Because you see, I believe in coincidences as much as I believe in preordained circumstances. And what do I mean by preordained circumstances? Well, you will have to return next week, hit the subscribe button, like if you enjoyed this video, but that subscribe button especially so that you can see when the next video comes out where I will tell you about my spiritual beliefs and how I attained them. I can't tell you everything that I've learned, but I've approached it with as much skepticism as I have had with an open mind, which is something I think everyone should do when they research and when they take the truth seriously. They should always be prepared to be wrong and prepared for the truth to be anything, so long as it reveals itself to be the truth. And I'll share with you next week 
And I believe some of that truth is regarding the supernatural and spiritual. Until then, my friends, I hope you have a significantly less stressful week than I had this past week. And I hope you're looking forward to the next video because I sure am. And then once that video is done, we're going to go back to the Bible and I've been learning some interesting things without even doing any research that I can't wait to get to you. That you, you are just going to love. Um, I've been going nuts over it myself. I literally just discovered some of it before sitting down to film this video. And I am going to do more research on it <laughs> before we get to that. Oh my god. Uh, it's a crazy life. Full of order and chaos. Until next week, my friends. Stay safe. Farewell.